Time on the West Coast took me away to long rocky beaches and stew by the bay. We started a story whose end must now wait and tell me. Well, surprise. Let's go find out how's the hike on the West Coast Trail again. Hmm, but first, you know the drill. A four hour bus ride. All right, little shot of the uh, Pachina Bay Trailhead. Actually, the sign is over there to take the ladders and go inland on this first section. Now, if you've watched my other videos from uh, my solo hike here in the moment to girls, you know that I typically take the beach. That said, I'm a few hours ahead of low tide right now. So it's just going to depend on how quickly it's going out and how high it was to begin with. But this is an easier way to move and there are people out there oh look tourists <laughs> yeah let's have a look and see if we can go around the bend oh no she's got to go out quite a ways all right well Let's go look at something I haven't seen since the 90s. The ladder's out of here. All right, here's that intersection. Obviously, from there. All right, let's go see what this looks like. Something new on day one. And we're off. A lot more work to do here. Right off the bat. Wow. Okay, there's the entrance from the beach. So if you're lucky enough to time the low tide, like I usually have been able to, you don't have to go that way if you're going the other direction. But now, back into the woods as expected. Either way. Man alive, is it hot. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> There's gonna be a hot patch here for the next couple of days and then the sunshine is actually gonna continue. If, of course, that's accurate over time. The coast always difficult to predict. Uh, listen, today it's either Michigan or Darling. That's really the two options on day one and it really doesn't matter which one you pick because the next day you're probably just going to Suciet Falls anyway. So my first two nights I kind of know those are my goalposts. After that I don't know and that's the thing. We'll talk about this in camp tonight if I have enough privacy. I'll take you through why I'm here how did I get back on the West Coast Trail? And also, just a little bit of trip planning, but nothing too major. Uh, there's lots of resources out there, including our other two videos. My solo hike, and then of course, the hike the following year with the girls. So, right. I get to Michigan. If there's a place to tuck up in the trees in the shade, I'll probably pick that place for the night. Have a little longer day to Susie tomorrow, but not much. A couple of kilometers, basically. But the shade tonight would be welcome, that's for sure. Because as I said, when I started this clip, she's hot. I wish that thing was working. So I could race away from all the bugs. Hot and buggy. <laughs> it's a good combo. Because anything you put on your face just sweats off, so... 
At least they haven't started flying in my eyes yet. Oh, I shouldn't have said that out loud. I remember in 2018, gloating that this was the first ladder I'd seen because I was able to do that beach walk. <laughs> uh, not today. Then we don't even need it, of course. Okay, there's the trail, and there is a little cutoff to the Sea Lion Haul Out Rock. And uh, you can hear them. There aren't that many down there right now. Maybe something to do with the tides, I don't know, or time of day, but uh, not hearing too much ruckus. But if you, uh, if you have some time to go down there at the right time, it can be pretty neat. And depending on the wind, smelly. <laughs> Oh, that's new. Very nice. Pachina Point light station. Now, this was closed due to COVID for a couple of years. It is now open again. And, uh, well, rather than take you up there for the third time on the channel, here's a little tour. Here's the Pachina Point light station. I have to sign in. All right, bears, wolves, cougars. That's a lot of diesel. Hope you enjoyed that. Nice spot for a break with a couple K left to camp. And uh, of course there's a composting toilet here as well. Should nature call. I do like these by the way. They're very, I don't know, civilized for an outhouse. Okay, home stretch to camp. Well, I just saw a paw print and there's some poop. And uh, Reasonably fresh. Lovely. Well, <laughs> we know there are bears here. I mean, look at this from 2018. Oh my God, there's a cub. There's a cub. It's a female. Oh my, okay. There's a cub. Well, that changes the game significantly. Yeah, so that's pretty much the same area. That was Darling, which is only three kilometers, basically, from where I'm at, so. All right. Hey, Bear. <laughs> Michigan. All right. I'm going to camp. I'm going to see if I can find a spot up here in the trees. Bear box. Bear pole. Tuck in somewhere here with a breeze. Beautiful spot there. Oh, that might be it. Another great spot out here. Okay. I'm going to pitch a tent. And then... Show you around. Okay, a little shot of uh, camp for me. You can see I have the Z-Pax duplex with me with the freestanding um, kit for the beach. I'm not completely convinced that freestanding would hold up in a big storm. Uh, I did a test on my front lawn. That didn't work very well and it was perfectly pitched. Just honestly it was. Anyway, uh, I showed you on the way in. Bear box there, another bear box there. We come through the central part of this campsite at Michigan. Lots of little spots here for people to tuck their tents in. And a lot of people who uh, do it on the beach. The uh, composting toilet's over there. There's another one you can see through the trees up there. And uh, your water source is Michigan Creek, which is just over there. And she's not running too fast. So once again, I'm out here with some low water levels. 
seems to be the norm. Let me just show you the beach real quick too. Lots of folks would come out here and camp on the beach for sure. I tried to get in here out of the sun as I mentioned earlier. That was kind of my goal. But let's give you a little view of this. Yeah, see like you could certainly put tents down through here. Lighthouse is up around the point. And uh, well, this is my view for the evening. Michigan on the West Coast Trail. While I get my supper ready, I'll take you through how I got here all of a sudden and uh, some trip planning. All right, uh, doing some rehydrating with some electrolytes, always important on these hot days. Um, West Coast Trail, why am I here? That's a great question. I'm gonna to get to that in a second and I'll be brief because it's a hiking video, not a therapy session. Although my hikes sometimes tend to be therapy sessions and that's, uh, I guess that's where I'm gonna go in a second. But yes, I'm going from north to south again. I'm a creature of habit, but I like it. I like taking my orientation in Port Renfrew the day before at two o'clock. Yes, they've changed the times now. It's 10 and two for the orientation. I think it used to be one in the afternoon, but it's now 10 and two. Uh, and you watch the orientation online on a video and then you're quizzed. Yesterday at two o'clock, I was the only person there, so I got the full quiz. <laughs> Obviously I passed, because I'm on the trail. So yeah, north to south, I like to walk back to my car. I don't want to have to rush out of here 12 kilometers to catch the bus, uh, and then go back to Port Renfrew and get in there at supper time, all smelly. Yes, the stink is real. Uh, we've, we've certainly, uh, uh, we've certainly um, solidified that, that the stink is real. So for me, it's just a better direction. And, you know, I've done this hike in the 90s. I did it again in 2018 solo, which you've seen here on YouTube. The girls and I came out the next year and did it together, which is also here on the channel. And so for me, this isn't necessarily a walk to explore the West Coast Trail again, although I'm excited to see what's changed, like the campsites. They get changed every year by weather. And of course, the new suspension bridge at Logan Creek is in. Uh, and I had seen that being built, and so I don't have to do those crazy ladders. Uh, not only is it basically straight across, but it's going to save some time in all that uh, climbing down and climbing back up, um, which is cool because, you know, you're starting to get to some chunky parts of the trail at that end. So, so yeah, I mean, I'm not really here to explore it for the first time. I, I know what I'm going to see for the most part, but I'm out here for myself and it just felt like something I needed to do. I was in the vicinity and that's the thing. I was in the vicinity. The weather opened up. My life has changed dramatically since um, even the Rockwall video in the fall. Um, briefly, I'm unemployed and I'm on my own again. And both were um, devastating, frankly, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, losing a family business is, is never easy. Uh, we had been struggling for a while, so it wasn't a complete and utter shock that maybe something wasn't going to work out, but it ended in the worst possible way. And all of that, of course, uh, has impacts on those around you. And even though you try your best not to let it affect everyone, you, it's, it's inevitable. So, and I think, you know, for me, having to deal with two losses at once has made it a little more difficult because you don't know what to process first. So you keep going back and forth and I'm not sure I'm making any progress at all. And I've, I've come, you know, walking on the trail and being out here is, is my therapy, like I did on the quiet hike. Um, another ter terrible time. And if you think about it, the last five years for me, uh, wow, let's, let's, let's start walking back uphill again, please, because yikes. Um, sorry, okay. All I was trying to say to wrap this up is loss is an interesting thing to process. And I, you know, when someone passes away, whether it's unexpected or whatever, I mean, you, you certainly mourn the life and that person and what they meant to you and all those things. I've been through that and we will all be through it in our lives and, and things like that. But, but when, you, when you lose things that you thought were gonna be there, well, till the end of days, uh, my days, 
you, you don't just mourn the loss of that and all the amazingness uh, and all the hopes and, and things that you had built into it, but you've lost the future. That's the thing that's the hardest to get through my own thick skull is, is you know, of course I'll have a future, God willing, but, but the future I thought I was going to have is gone. It's not coming back and you know you 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 go through those phases of, of loss right denial and all uh, bargaining and all these things and for me that's the hardest part it's 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 letting go of what I thought was going to be over the next say 20 years or more hopefully um, knock on wood that's the that's the tough part for me it's that future that I saw and was building is not there for me anymore so that's why I'm out here. I'm out here to make a great video. So this will be the last one of these conversations. But also I'm out here just to find my rudder, if you'll pardon, pardon the nautical phrase. Remember in Grandma Nan, I made the comment about the big ocean and the small boat. Well, it's true. I think the saying goes, God, you have such a large ocean and my boat is so small. And when you've lost your anchor, it's hard. So let's walk it off together. Thanks for listening. I'm going to make some supper now and uh, move on to happier things. A little shot to the entrance of where my tent is. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's grown. They grow every year. There's another shot. You could put some tents back in here behind this log for sure. It is quiet here tonight. In fact, I've just met the only other person here in camp and it's, uh, well, yeah, this may fall over. Oh, look how dark I am. Let me, let's go this way. Oh, isn't that better? <laughs> Maybe not, right? Go back to the darkness. Uh, it's, oh God, it's almost seven o'clock and there's nobody here except me and one other guy. And he's coming the other direction, so. Uh, just under 12 kilometers, 1187 according to Gaia. The 12 kilometer marker is just before you come into camp, so I'll take it. That's fine. She's a long one. Uh, tomorrow, Susiat, and I'm probably going to have to get up early and go, maybe for the tides, but also for the heat. Another hot, hot day tomorrow, and then it's going to cool down a bit, so that'll be welcome. I'm not going to complain about the sun, obviously, on the West Coast Trail, but uh, it can get, especially out here on the beaches walking, whoo, it can be like not healthy so you have to be careful um, that said if I go to Susiat there's nowhere to tuck in there in the shade so um, <clears throat> pardon me it'll be roasty either way uh, unless I pick out another campsite and I have a I have some ideas on that I'm gonna go in the tent now and do some research but first let me leave you this panorama for day one that's where I'm going here's where I've come from See you in the morning. Good night. Good morning, day two on the West Coast Trail, 2023 edition. And uh, I'm looking at that Coast Guard ship. I'm gonna use my iPhone because I can zoom on it. There's a, here we go. A Coast Guard ship, right out there near the light station, actually. I wonder if they're doing some sort of resupply or something like that. That's pretty cool. Very cool. Move back in. All right. Gorgeous morning, nice and chilly, which I'm liking because it was hot yesterday. It's going to be hot again today. And that brings me to the trip planning. So I looked at the, uh, hi there. Oh, -ho. morning. <laughs> I looked at the map last night and the tides are not going to play with me on this trip. It's funny. I mean, I've always had issues with tides doing hole in the wall and stuff like that. But this year it's crazy. So uh, I might not even go to Susiat Falls because of the tides and the ladders. I might stay a little bit closer to where I'm at tonight. Klanawa River, maybe? And uh, it's a couple k short of Susiat. The thing is, when I wake up at Susiat in the morning, I can't walk the beach tomorrow if I was there. So that means I have to climb up the ladders and, well, I'll show you a little later what that looks like. <laughs> But, um, I mean, I've seen Susiat three times. You've seen it twice here on the channel. So if I don't go down there because of the tides and the ladders, 
I'll just show it to you from a previous trip. You don't want to miss it if, if you're out here for the first time, that's for sure. But, staying at another little campsite similar to this tonight, where I can get tucked up in the woods out of the heat, might also be very, very helpful. So, a little coffee and breakfast as usual. And uh, I'm just gonna look out here, watch the Coast Guard show on a gorgeous, gorgeous Monday morning on the West Coast Trail. Thank you, Michigan. A little shot of Michigan Creek. Not much to worry about here this morning. Basically, well, literally a rock hop. <laughs> a couple of kilometers on the beach to Darling, and then I'm gonna have to duck up into the woods because the tides are gonna start coming in here shortly. I could probably skirt it this early in the morning, but I think it's just easier to head up into the woods and then I won't have to worry about it coming in on me fast because it is an impassable tide today at the time I need it. And as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago in the video, which is about an hour ago for me, I'm gonna have tide issues this whole trip. So probably a lot of forest walking, unfortunately. All right, crossing here and that way. Look at that. Woohoo, good morning. Oh, baby. So remember last night I showed you some bear poop? I didn't show you any paw prints. That's this morning because it's low tide. Okay, and the water comes up into this vicinity. So uh, that's a pretty good sized black bear actually. Heading in my direction. Well, he or she's ahead of me. And as we know, Darling tends to be bear central here from my own experience and then over the last couple of years, so no surprise there. Good looking specimen, however. Coming into Darling. Not too far past Michigan, really. Just past three backpackers going the other way. Heading to the trailhead, I would assume, at this point in the morning. Some folks here packing up. And uh, this is where I have to duck up into the woods because the tide's coming in. Also gets me out of the sun that's starting to swing around here. It's gonna be 27 today. So a tough day to walk on the beach for sure <clears throat> from a heat and sun exposure perspective. But I, I'm not one of these people that doesn't uh, like walking in the woods. I love walking in the woods, so no big deal. All right, darling. We'll walk through here and find the entry point to the trail. Tucked in now, talked to some folks that were there. I think I came up on the bus with them, so they went right through to Darling last night, which is not a bad day, of course. And they did see the bear this morning. So, not sure where he or she went, but I know I'm going that way. Tracking the bear continues. That is 100% this morning. All right, big boy, where are you? Where are you? First, if he answers back, I've got a problem. <laughs> Coming up on First Guardian's cabin so far on the trip. I always joke about in uh, the National Parks, Jasper and Banff, how the wardens get the best views. This ain't too bad, is it? Gorgeous. What a morning. A little shot of the cabin here. It's a Callis Creek patrol cabin. And I'm going this way. What a spot though, have a look at that. Good morning. Quick shot of Sakalis camp. Bear boxes obviously. Camp is down that way. Let's have a quick peek for your planning. <clears throat> Boy, she's tight. <laughs> yeah. So, go out there and find yourself a place to set up behind some of these logs obviously and uh i'm gonna go back and pick my way across 
Wakey wakey. My legs are achy. <laughs> uh, oh, good a bridge. Gorgeous spot. Back out on the beach for a short bit. Tide's coming in. We'll cover this eventually where I'm standing. A couple of hours from now, probably. I haven't checked my watch, so I'm gonna guess probably three hours from now. Well, somebody lost their spare tire. <laughs> uh, 2.7 meters is the, uh, or below is the uh, high tide mark here required to pass. Now, high tide was about an hour ago, hour and a half ago, so it's receding and I'm gonna get by now, I think. It's gonna be tight, but if I have to wait, I'll just sit in the shade, have a break. Can't change the tides. Hello, snake. What are you doing down there? Morning. All right, I'm all set up. I've had a nice bath. A, uh, what do they call it? Birthday boy bath. <laughs> in the Klanawa River, drying some stuff off here. Uh, always a graveyard of old trees here at Klanawa, actually. Water wasn't too cold, so that was nice, but it's impassable. I walked all the way down to the mouth, and there's no way I'm going across that tomorrow. A little too early in the season, so I'll have to cable car it. And my goodness, that's gonna be tough because one person in a cable car, is the, the challenge is getting on and off, so I'll have to rig up some rope. I've decided to camp here, uh, a little bigger spot, somewhere to sit. Also, it's close to the water source. And um, just, you know, you're going to come, if you're going uh, north to south, you're going to come this way, and you're going to go that way. And that takes you around to the cable car. Also up on this side is the privy composting toilet. One of the bear boxes. Some folks left some stuff from last year. Always interesting to see what gets left behind, including a shoe and some gaiters. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the walk. We're going to walk that way. I'm going to show you the other tent pads. All right, walked over a little bit. Here's your ocean. Hello. There's a tent pad, nice in the shade. Somebody's gone to the trouble of taking some uh, ocean garbage and making a nice table out of it. Very nice. Another nice little spot here. I think somebody was tucked in here last night. This campsite doesn't get a lot of love like the other ones. Most people coming north to south are going to go on to Susiat. And as I've said to you, if you're out here for the first time, you really need to go to Susiat. Another person could tuck, it, tuck in here if they had to. Ah, and really the last spot that I could see is right here. So four tents over here. You could probably tuck a couple where I am. And uh, Klanawa River. Early day for me is gonna make tomorrow a couple kilometers longer. Tomorrow typically always the longest day on the West Coast Trail because you can't camp at Clues anymore. So I actually camped there. I don't know if I told you the story, I camped there when I was uh, well, in the 90s, I was out here with an old girlfriend of mine and woke up in the night, looked out the tent, and there was a large cat prancing through the tents. Just didn't bother anybody, but was kind of looking around. So they closed that area. So tomorrow's gap is from here, or Susiat, all the way to Cribs, or Carmana. And it will be Cribs for me at about 18K. So that's it. I'm going to take the afternoon and read some literature and... Uh, Enjoy this cool breeze and this amazing view on the West Coast Trail. <laughs> well, you might notice something different about me. I'm wearing my hoodie. Okay, it was 27 and sunny. The fog has rolled in. Let me just swing this around real quick for you and show you. Yeah, there's the fog. Anybody that lives on a coast, whether it be my home province and my hometown near St. John, New Brunswick, or out here on the West Coast, hot days can turn into fog, cold nights. And that's what's going on now. So I'm gonna have an early supper and uh, 
lay in my sleeping bag for a while. It's also kind of spitting. This is a thing about fog. It can be heavy, almost like a drizzle. So who knows what's in store for me tonight. <laughs> anyway, I just want to share this with you too. So I have a lot of dehydrated meals left from during COVID. I uh, didn't hike much and I bought some, like the silly prepper I was at the time, waiting for the zombie apocalypse. Uh, that said, none, ha none came, so I'm eating a lot of Alpine Air stuff, which is not my favorite. But I'm also, uh, because I don't have any budget anymore for anything, uh, I'm making my own. So these are re uh, reusable packets. You can uh, hydrate right in the bag and then wash them at home with soap and water. And in here I have uh, stovetop stuffing, Idaho and mashed potatoes, and some dehydrated corn and some dehydrated chicken. It's basically Christmas dinner on the trail. So tonight, this is a big experiment. Um, I had to add up how much water and all that kind of stuff and do some uh, calculus to discover how much to hydrate this. So, next clip, how'd I do? All right, moments of truth. I think it needs, I've already had a bite, sorry. I think it needs a little more stuffing. Mmm, really good and really cheap. And uh, that's important. Mm. Well, that's a wrap on day two, just under 11 kilometers according to Gaia. Of course, uh, Gaia doesn't always agree with Parks Canada's signposts out here. It all adds up at the end. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Uh, tomorrow's going to be long, though. I, uh, I couldn't have gone two more K to Suciat. I've already mentioned that. If you're out here, you should go. It's spectacular. And I didn't want to be out in the sun. That said, boom, foggy night and chilly willy. Oh, my. The breeze coming off the water, coming right into my uh, tent pad, which I picked for the breeze when it was hot. And uh, I'm all bundled up and comfy. No big deal. So yeah, tomorrow's going to be 18 to 20K. Uh, knit Nat Narrows. Oh, hang on. Uh, see, that's better. Uh, knit Nat Narrows. Uh, we'll go through that area as well. Go past Susiat Falls. And I think tomorrow's target's Cribs. Cribs, then Walbran. And then Camper or Thrasher or something like that. I've only got enough food for six nights, so <laughs> I can't linger too long, even though I'd like to. So, yeah, I'm going to tuck in and uh, do some reading. And enjoy the sounds. We'll see you in the morning. Good morning, day three. And uh, yeah, she was a foggy wet one overnight. It's that kind of fog that I was kind of mentioning yesterday that can kind of, you know, uh, wet everything on you. Huh back in the light deja vu all over again anyway <clears throat> yeah so kind of a wet night the tent's uh, pretty wet on the outside in the fog as is basically everything else surfaces of stuff so no big deal but a nice cool morning to get going on a long day which is nice it is going to warm up later you can see the water here yeah uh, it is going to warm up later which is cool and uh but not as hot as it's been, about 12 degrees. Is that right? No, eight degrees Celsius less uh, today than yesterday. And we've got the morning of fog, so that's pretty good. Not a bad sleep, not a great sleep. Uh, right at my window, let me just set you down here. Ugh. Try that again. Right at my window of sleep, some folks come into camp, no big deal, everybody's on their own schedule, but it just hit you at one of those times when you, I thought I was going to be alone, I wasn't expecting to see anybody. And it was dark, so you get the flashing headlamps that kind of hit your, uh, that kind of hit your tent, right? And if you've ever been in a tent when the headlamps go off, it's like, whoa, you know? And you're like, what's that? But anyway, it's nobody's fault, it's just one of those things. Although, pro tip. If you are in a campsite late at night, use the red light if you have one on your headlamp. And the next time you upgrade to a headlamp, if you don't have the red light, get one with one. Keeps your night vision in check. And once your eyes adjust to it, you can kind of see around camp. I wouldn't hike with it, obviously, but uh, I certainly would use it around camp for your own eyesight. But uh, anyway, so yeah, so just kind of one of those tossy turny nights. And you know, you get a big day ahead of you. Right, listen, it's not that big a day, but big enough for me. Uh, you start to think, geez, I got to get going. I got to get up. 
so you toss and turn in the morning too. Anyway, the antidote for all of that, coffee. All right, underway. And I can hear people coming across the cable car in this direction already. So I might have to wait over here, no big deal. Some folks off to an early start, I'm gonna say from Susiat Falls, obviously. So let's go up and see what's going on. And uh, of course, I won't be able to show you this because <laughs> this one person maneuver on these is very difficult. I've even got some rope <clears throat> all put together here so I can tie myself off, tie the, the cable car off so I can load and unload. It's gonna take a little while. So there's a large group up here and they just, well, basically I did nothing. I sat in the uh, cable car and they did all the work and my goodness, what a beautiful way to start the day. I'm so grateful. <laughs> I mean, I really am. That's, that's hard work as one person. I was kind of dreading it. So that was just a wonderful way to start the day and so kind of them. Ah, oh, I think it's gonna be a great day. Lots of boardwalks this morning right off the bat, but just a little tip, I'm sure you know this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. They're wet this morning because of the fog. That makes them slippery. You don't think they're slippery, but trust me, they are. And it's funny how quickly you can fall out here. So just uh, walk gingerly when they're wet, because they'll, they'll slip you up. Coming up towards Susiat Falls access, uh, you can see way down there, I'm gonna zoom in on my iPhone. Uh, here we go. You can see way down there, hole in the wall. And I have never made hole in the wall. <laughs> the tides are always against me. Anyway, you can see the tide coming in this morning, so that's what's happening. Anyway, I'll show you the access to Susia, which we're going to bypass this morning, as you know, but I'm going to show you some video clips from past years so you don't miss anything. That should be coming up momentarily. Well, here's the big bridge. To the left is Susia Lake, and this is the drainage, of course. Let me just get up here real quick. There we go. Yeah, so that would go up to Susia Lake. This drains down. And right over there, it's almost like what they call it, infinity pool. Susiat Falls, and the water's pretty good right now. So it would have been a good show. Speaking of that, let me show you 2018 and 2019 to show you the difference a year can make in water flow. Ready? Here it is. Susiat Falls. If you've been out here a bit or watched any other videos, you'll know that usually that's a full wall of water. A little light right now. There's Evelyn enjoying watching Olivia in the grotto. <laughs> I'm only going in, not Ah. ah. I said I will be going in, just not the same thing. Gotcha. What a difference a year can make, right? With water flow and everything. All right, next big milestone for me is Nitnat Narrows. But just up here, let me show you those ladders that I wanted to avoid this morning. But first, <laughs> this. All right, quick peek down. So I just didn't want to deal with these this morning, obviously, <laughs> which I've said several times, so I'll stop now. So, onward to Knit Nat Narrows and a Diet Coke or Pepsi at the Crab Shack. Ooh. Well, I didn't put my famous rain kilt on this morning, so I didn't really think about it being too tight and close in here, but it is. I'm soaking wet, not from rain or sweat, but wet plants, getting a bath this morning. Anyway, it feels good and it's nice and cool, so, you know, I'm gonna take it. That said, I'm gonna have to find a place to sit down here soon and uh, rinse my socks out because they're soaking wet from my boots getting oversaturated. So that's a problem because I'll get blisters. I think back to the Nipisgut uh, Micmac Trail in New Brunswick 
where that happened to me. So I never get blisters, but because my feet got pruny, that's what happened. So I'm gonna wait and see if I can find a bench up here. I don't really wanna wait till the narrows, if I can help it and uh, get some of the water out of these socks and boots. See what I mean? Everything's just soaking wet. Oh, here we go again, watch out. Oh, <laughs> I kept you dry. Somebody asked me in one of our old videos where this was. This is about five kilometers from where I camped last night at the river. Okay, 5K from where I camped last night. So what's that put it? 3K toward Gordon River from Susiette Falls. Uh, I guess in a pinch in bad weather, this would work all right. Put your tent over there or there. I guess that fire would get pretty smoky in here, I would think. I'm not sure that's gonna help keep the ceiling up, but. Uh... <laughs> anyway, 5K from the river where I camped last night. Maybe 3K from the falls ladders. There, question answered. I'll try to remember to post that when I get back to civilization. Oh man, could I use that this morning? <laughs> I'm soaking wet. Uh, hopefully that means that somewhere up here, some work's been done. Uh, no, here comes another bath. Oddly enough, there is the second 32 kilometer marker. Just steps away from Nitnat Narrows. And uh, not surprisingly, you can see the Narrows. And just before you get there, <laughs> a big climb and some pain and suffering. Very typical of the West Coast Trail. So, should be down a bit. And I'll call out for the boat. Head over to the Crab Shack for my Diet Coke. Can't wait. Little shot from my perch here. You can kind of see the boat over there tied up. I always have to kind of call out a few times. It could be busy over there or they get doing something. But uh, I'll call out again here in a second. That's going up to uh, Nitnat Lake. This is obviously the Narrows. You can see the tide's coming in. So there's quite a good surge coming up the channel there. Obviously, you need a boat. <laughs> so, let's try this again. Watch your ears now. Hello! Hello! Morning! See what happens. That wasn't too long. Showtime! Alright, little shot of the crab shack. As you can see, I had a buble, as we call them now, <laughs> because there was no Diet Coke. Oh well, I didn't need the caffeine anyway. So, let's see how these boardwalks are this year. Wow, several people have had a bad day here. <laughs> let's hope it wasn't the same person, because that would really be bad luck. That's the old saying, kind of relates to my life. If I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have any at the moment. Why is he saying that as he crosses this bridge that has so many broken boards? Ooh, wait, hang on. Maybe things are looking up. So Parks Canada map says between kilometer 30 and 40, not much water, and it's, they're right. There is a sign here, and there's a bit down there you could get if you needed it. I'm about to uh, cross the Chiwa River. I think I'm saying that right. I could be wrong. I said Klanawa before, and it's Klanawa. Uh, this river's tidal in this section, according to the map, so not a water source. So if you're dry, that would be it. Anyway, let's go have a look at this beautiful structure and thank goodness it's here because i'm not sure we'd get across it otherwise 
she's pretty deep let's have a look hello beautiful oh. up river and down river gorgeous spot all right I'm gonna linger here a couple minutes and then we'll head this way all right there's kilometer 37 so in about 500 meters of walking in this direction I'm going to be halfway through the 75 kilometers of the West Coast Trail I'm still four and change from cribs for the night so home stretch long day but doesn't feel like it it's been good nice and cool for walking day started off with that amazing help across <laughs> the Klonoa River that was cool so yeah 4k to campish and uh, try to dry some stuff off and do a little relaxing well shoot what was I just saying a minute ago <laughs> Oh, hey, uh, caramba. All right, up we go. Okay, beach access is over there. Some joker put another one here hanging in a tree and I thought, oh, maybe there's other beach access. Because the map does have a couple, but uh, no dice at the moment. So, a little late in the day. Whoa, gonna fall. There we go, okay. Just a little slide. Oh, whoo. All right, a little late in the day to be doing this. Less than 2K. But, I'm here now, so, tide is going out, just so you know. A couple more hours to low tide at, uh, what is it, 1.1 meters. This is passable at 2.1. So, I should be fine if I can just keep my footing. Oy. Alright, got through, got through that section. Now a little more. I think the, I think the trail would have been easier. But uh, well, at least it's different. I've been in the woods all day, so I think one more craggy outcropping here and I should be within eyesight of cribs. Okay, this is good walking now. Nice and hard packed sand around that point. As I said a minute ago, and I should be able to see cribs campsite. Wow, look at that. That literally looks man-made. Wow. More over there. Interesting. I remember on the, the, Pisgah, the Pisgah Trail in New Brunswick, there was some neat rock formations, but uh, I'm gonna see if there's anything on the map when I get to camp. Look at that, look at that over there. Wow, I've never been out here. This is a point I've never crossed at low tide. So my day started well, and with this, my day is ending well. That is so neat. Look at that. Wow. And here, it almost looks like hieroglyphics, you know? All right, fascinating. It's the little things, right? All right, let's go, oh boy. You pick my way through here. Ah! Get over to the beach. Oh boy, what an ordeal to get here. I had to bushwhack. I got out there on that rock and realized that I wasn't sure if I could get off of it down there somewhere. I probably could have, but I wasn't sure and I didn't want to go down there and go all the way back. So I had to bushwhack up and find the trail. And oh my God, that's the end of me. And look at this, there's like a festival going on at Cribs. This campsite seems to be always busy. I stayed here at, in 2019 with the girls 
and it was packed and hot not a lot of water be different today of course but lots of room that's not an issue at all but lots of people wow well <laughs> time to go join the party all right little shot around camp you can see i'm using the z-pax duplex freestanding pole setup uh not bad <laughs> it could be better I mentioned uh, early in the video, and I don't know if I showed a clip or a picture, I should say, is I watched this do this in the wind once, and then it collapsed during a windstorm at my house, which kind of made me a little crazy. Boiling some water for food. It's Black Bart chilly night. Giant group tonight, and so the bear boxes are full, and I'm not going to show you the outhouse and the bear boxes, which are back there in the woods. I will show you this with the iPhone. I'm going to zoom in. It's going to be blurry like that moose I tried to get a picture of once, but there is... The sea lion haul out rock. Let me just steady this. No, that's not very good steadying, Stu. But anyway, there it is. There are sea lions out there tonight. Oh, hello, blurry. There we go. Sea lions out there tonight making lots of racket. So, yeah, quick supper for me. And uh, just going to rest. That was, <laughs> that was long. And then, of course, when I got over here, I started coming out these rocks. And, yeah, that wasn't great started coming out the rocks and then realized I had to turn around and, and then bushwhack back up into the hill only to find a ladder back down to the beach so uh, live and learn all right little supper and then uh, well I'll take you through tomorrow's plans yum okay doing my Joey Coconado here uh, Cribs Creek where I'm at tonight and it's only 4k over here to Carmona once I get to Carmona I continue on the beach to Bonilla and then I have to think of some stuff right here. As you can see this, I can pass between here and the beach access below three meters. Tomorrow's high tide's at 12, 11 p.m. and it's 3.1 meters. So, maybe an early start to get past there. And if I get an early start, then I'll have to assess stopping at Walbran or going over the new Logan Creek Bridge, which will be fast and heading into Cullite tomorrow night at 58. That'd be about a 16K day, which is no big deal if I get up early and get going and I can hit the tides. Otherwise, I'll just pop into Walbran, stay for the night, and then probably head to camp for the next night. And then maybe Thrasher to extend the trip before I head out. Haven't had you down on Thrasher in any of the videos. So anyway, this is a section here I'm concerned about. Not between uh, Vanilla Point and the beach access at three meters. I can probably get there in time, uh, I think. But there's the issue right there between Vancouver Point and Walbrand. Now the girls and I were able to go around that. When we stayed here in 2019, we stayed at Walbrand. We actually were able to do that Ford. Um, if Walbrand is not in flood, that's a nice walk, actually. Very quick and very nice. But I don't know if Walbrand's in flood. And wouldn't it suck to turn around and have to go all the way back here, up into the woods, and then over to the cable car? So I'll have to I'll have to see what's going on. I will look at Carmona. When I cross Carmona, I'll have an idea um, whether Walbrand would be in flood, because it's only a few kilometers down. So that's the plan for tomorrow. Now, let me flip this over so you can... Look at my ugly mug as I wrap up the day, which was just under, just under 20 kilometers. And the last few minutes were me bushwhacking up the hill from the rocks out there, back to the trailhead, just in time to find the ladder that brought me down to the beach. So I've had a lovely, relaxing, quiet evening. I've uh, read some books on my iPhone. I've played some games on my iPhone. And I just want to say, I think this is the last trip with a GoPro. I'll probably just use my iPhone. Why? It's acting up again. It's a Hero 9. Maybe it's the West Coast Trail. Here's a flashback. Videoing this on my iPhone, in case there's a difference. Um, for some reason, my GoPro won't turn on. So when I actually have a proper time to stop, I'll go ahead and... Uh, change the batteries out and hope that's it. Although it's been acting a little funny on this trip. Sometimes it just doesn't turn on, so. Just had a quick little break at kilometer 65 and realized that the GoPro is not gonna turn on. I've got uh, lots of batteries and they're all charged and it's broken. So, uh, nice new Hero 6 DOA on the West Coast Trail. So, uh, the rest of this will be videoed on my iPhone. So you can see I might as well just use my iPhone. There's really no reason. We almost lost the entire Sawback circuit because of a GoPro. And uh, 
less weight, less batteries, no more charging for that. So that's kind of where my mind is tonight. Anyway, I'm going to lay here and continue all of the above that I mentioned a minute ago. And I'll wish you a very good night. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. Day four. <laughs> I had to think about that. Again, somebody usually tells me, this hiking alone, I don't know, man. I think I need company. Not a great sleep either. I don't know why. Like, I was tired physically, certainly, but uh, man, it wasn't really noisy. You know, it was a big group over there, but they were, they were quiet. Well, until 5.30 this morning when it was wood chopping time. So, but that's not bad because I wanted to get up early anyway and try to catch these tides. Oh, excuse me. Huh, oh, that must be pleasant for you watching me on. Um, yeah, I want to try to catch that tide at one section, so. Definitely going to get up and at them. Underway. Obviously, got the tide here for quite a while. Just after 7 a.m., so high tide's in about five hours. Which is pretty good. Head start. Doesn't mean I'll be able to take Vancouver Point around a wall brand, but there's just that one little section I've got to make sure I hit. So, cross over here and head that way. Carmona. Well, it's not going to show you much, but I'll try to zoom in. There's the Sea Lion Hall Out Rock. Yeah, it's going to be bumpy. There they are. <laughs> Hard to see off in the distance, but I can see the line going up to the Kamana Light. Station. <clears throat> Pick my way across this point. Making pretty good time. Walking's not bad. Everyone thinks, you know, it's a walk in the beach or walk in the park, but beach walking is actually kind of tough. I've mentioned this before. You know, you sink a lot and everything's uneven, so. <clears throat> I mean, it's nicer than picking through the roots in the muck. <laughs> but, has its own challenges for sure. Finding a path here that's not too slippery is uh, something you need to keep your eyes on. Everything below here, that's super slippery, obviously. Even pushing off your back foot is uh, a bit of a challenge. Just looking back that way from where I've come. Just picking my way across here. All right. I'll uh, turn the cameras off and keep paying attention. <laughs> I've just realized I probably haven't been around this point before. There's going to be beach access up here where I can get up onto the trail and cut around the lighthouse. But I, uh, this is really difficult and I don't remember it from a previous hike. Like the part I'm showing you now is easy, which is why I'm videoing, but wow, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Now there are some footprints here, which means I'm not the only crazy one. But I wonder if I've saved any time. Because <laughs> I am picking. It is uh, pretty technical. And uh, look at that. Slippery. I probably should be out there. In fact, maybe I'll just make my way out there and get a better vantage point and kind of swing around that way. All right. Yes, that shelf was the way to go in this direction for me at that point. Let's just put it that way. There's my access up to the trail. It's just basically cutting over this point where the Carmana light station is. And uh, back down to the beach to Carmana. The, uh, the campsite area. Just a uh, little ways up, of course, still, but that'll be next. One last set of stairs. I should be at the Carmana light station. I'm gonna show you as I head back out to the trail for a very short time and then back down to the beach, as I mentioned. Let's go see what this is all about. Nice to see some solar panels, that's cool. Another great, another great spot. 
I don't think I've ever showed you this on video before, so kind of cool to be here. Whew. Yeah, gorgeous spot. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Which way to the trail? That's a good question. I think it's probably this way. Okay, when you come up out of there, look left. There's a sign over here. It took me a couple minutes to find it, actually. I had to look at my Gaia GPS to see where the trail should be. And that led me over in this direction, so... You won't make that mistake if you've just watched this clip. Alright, a little forest walking. Then down to the beach that leads to Carmont. Back out to the trail intersection. Do keep an eye on this. Make sure you go in the right direction. <laughs> All right. Well, there's the last ladder down. And I'll head out to the beach. Pick my way onto the beach over some driftwood, I'm pretty sure. And uh, get around the bend here. Yeah. Oh. All right. Yeah, pick my way down and head that way. There's the old Shamanique's. I'll show you that in a sec. Well, there it is, the old Shamanique's. I was lucky to meet Monique when I was out here in the 90s. And, uh, not so much, yeah. And then in 2018 on my solo hike, I was able to meet Monique's daughter and granddaughter and her husband, Peter. Of course, Monique had passed. They were still here running the place. Unfortunately, the following year, or later that year, I honestly forget, Peter was killed tragically, I think in a boating accident. And uh, that was the end of Shamanique's. So, a little part of history out here that I was very lucky to take part in. It's funny. It's funny how people, humans, our fellow people, contribute so much to our memories and our life experience. And uh, sometimes it's sad when those things go. Well, it's always sad. But at least you had them for a while. Coming into Carmana. Some folks over there from last night. I'm going to cross here and not take the cable car. Try to keep my feet dry if I can. So, uh, I'll have a look there. There it is again. Lovely spot. Stayed here in 2018. Just me and one other guy. Also from New Brunswick, <laughs> if I remember correctly. All right, pick my way through here. I made it across at the outlet there, but my boots are leaking again. I just treated them. They were four years old, so everything breaks down. I really thought they'd last a little longer having just retreated them. So, anyway. Stop up here for a break. Wring out my socks. I'm gonna zoom in here. This is Vanilla Point. You can see a beautiful campsite there with waterfalls. So this is one of these ones that's a little off the radar, you know? A little off the radar. But a gorgeous spot. I camped there for sure. You can tell it's fresh moving water. And uh, again, just a lovely little spot and very underused. Which if you're looking for some, you know, less big crowds, I could serve you well. Take a little break up here in Manila Point. And then I've got uh, a few K before I have to worry about getting to Vancouver Point and then out into the trail. It's all gonna depend on the time.
Okay, this is the point near the 50 kilometer mark. That's between here and Vancouver Point, the access back to the trail, uh, passable to three meters. High tides in two and a half hours at 3.1 meters, so I'm fine. You know, and I, I suspected that, but you just never know. And uh, my pace this morning has been good, so I'll plod along here toward Vancouver Point, which you can't see. And find what I'm sure are ladders to get me up to the trail, which I'm going to have to take all the way to Walbran, which means unless I get super lucky like I did yesterday, I'll be doing a cable car by myself. So that's the plan at the moment. But first, let's finish this beach walk. Probably hard to make out, I'll zoom in a little. Yeah, there they are. Some hikers way down there in the fog, coming my way. I just stopped to take a very quick break and uh, saw them coming there, so I'll head that way soon and uh, say good morning. Another big group, like the other big groups I've met, not very chatty. <laughs> That's interesting, like, said good morning and didn't hear any replies except one, which is weird. The good thing about having a big group is, look, I don't have to worry about where I'm going. <laughs> Not that I was worried, but you certainly know where they've come from. The gentleman did tell me they stayed at Cullite last night. So, you know, if things go well to Walbrand, that's probably my play today. Something different for me. Here's the access. Now this is tempting. This is Vancouver Point. It's about, let's just say it's two kilometers to uh, Walbran. And I'm two hours from high tide at 3.1 meters. This is passable to 2.7. Oh. Decisions, decisions. Anyway, I'm gonna ponder this for a second and look at this waterfall while I do. I'll zoom in for you on the iPhone. There you go. Hello, waterfall. A little better shot for you. Yeah, I've opted for the grueling ladders. Did the math in my head, and I think I probably could have made it, but you know, what if? And I'm not in any hurry. So, frankly, if you're not in any hurry, oh, what's the point? I might as well get a little bit of jiggly legs going up these ladders and then just coast into Walbran and take a break and probably probably had to call out at this point it's still early so anyway thought I'd just share that with you so I could take a break <laughs> on these uh, well these never-ending ladders you can see they continue to go way up there Ooh, one at a time hmm. okay Boy, there's some ladders down there. I can see the cable car lines from here. You won't be able to see them through the trees, but uh, I'm gonna have to do this one myself. Oh boy, always a pleasure. Um, yeah, so down and then, well, right back up. Man alive. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have a little lunch before I attempt this cable car solo. Let me show you what I'm getting myself into here. Let me, sorry about the jiggly. There we go. Yeah, let me show you what I'm getting myself into here. I mean, I've done it solo. It can be done. I've even cut down a little piece of rope so I can tie the cable car to me, or to me, <laughs> to the, uh, you know, where I get on, let's say. So, yeah. Make a little lunch up here first before I attempt this. Oh, I remember this one. I dropped some some stuff here once and had to go find it. In fact, look at, somebody dropped a water bottle. Oops. 
Mission accomplished. You come down from there. All right, just make yourself a little left. And you're gonna go over here. Now, just down there, of course, is the campsite. Which, uh, well, here's a quick clip from 2019 with the girls and I. Fog rolled in. Brought a lot of misty drizzle with it, soaking the rain fly. But Olivia is keeping us all nice and toasty warm out here with this amazing campfire. Nice job, kiddo. You have a new talent. So you can see, foggy. Some great campfire action. I mean, there's no problem with a campfire. Look around. Oh yeah. All right. I'm gonna say four and a half-ish to Cullite. I can't get an agreement on Gaia or the maps. Ran into some folks who said you couldn't get to the campsite at Cullite due to some sort of, I don't know, washout. I didn't read anything about that at the trailheads, nor did I hear anything in orientation, nor is there anything on my permit in my email. So, let's go, let's go see what happens. Well, at least I'm safe from the tsunami. Yes, that's the trail. And that's a good part. I guess Murphy's Law, this stuff always seems to come in your last few kilometers. <laughs> oh yeah, Karumba, and she's slick. Slick, slick, slick. Okay. Well, here we are, the new Logan Creek Suspension Bridge. And before we get up on this beauty, let me just flash up what I have of what it looked like before and the crazy ladders you had to use. Here you go. That's the hardest thing I think I've ever done. First of all, a little afraid of heights. <laughs> Only in certain situations. But I'm glad they're building a new suspension bridge here because it's uh, one plank wide and it uh, rocks and rolls. And then these stairs, the first set of stairs is tilting toward the river. And uh, yeah, so I'll take a little lunch break here. Woo, we did it. Yes, sir, Bob. So last year, if you watched my hike, one of the things I said was, I'm not sure I could watch the girls do some of the stuff that I did. And I just watched them do it. 2018 and 2019, this was being built. And man, does this, look at this feat of engineering. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. And what a bunch of time this saves. I'm gonna take a little break across here because once I'm finished crossing, I've only got a couple of K to collate. So, see if the old bridge is gone. I think it is. I think they took her down. Actually, let me hold on to something as well. <laughs> now I've shared this in the past. I do have a fear of heights toe tingling kind of stuff so I mean oh yeah the old one's gone the ladders are gone they used to be kind of kind of over that way there used to be a campsite down there too but it got all washed out all right let's finish this up I have a little break on the other side Logan Creek wowie wow Hmm, what happened to the bridge? <laughs> oh, somebody forgot to turn off the tap. Home stretch, the ladders of Cullite. 
And this cable car, typically I don't take the cable car. Let's see how the water is, but, uh, and let's see who's right. I met a group that said they camped at Cullite last night. Then I met some people that said they couldn't get to Cullite. So, we're gonna find out. But first, the easier part of the ladders of Cullite. Let's just, oh, see how far that is down there? Okay, I've opted not to take the cable car. I walked across the water. Got a little wet, but last stop of the day. And there's sun right now, so things should dry out. That said, I did find a trail that's supposed to head down to Cullite, and holy moly! Uh, <laughs> I've never seen something so overgrown. So I gotta think, this is how people walk down. There's lots of footprints. So, people are getting down here somehow. I could camp right here, though. It's totally legal. I wanted to. Maybe they just rock hop down there. Well, let's find out. Well, I'm in the right direction. That looks fun. Let's see if there's another one down here, and if not, I'm gonna have to head up that hill and then down it in the morning. Ooh. Yeah, okay, this looks more stewable, as in doable. Hey, I just made that up, stewable. All right. All right, let's go find camp. And uh, I'll show you around Cullite. I've never been here before, so I'm pretty excited. Well, there's the privy. Yes, please keep two meters away while, I don't know, pooing together in the single stall toilet. Oi. Maybe a little spot there you could tuck into. I think I might have this place alone tonight. Now, I've said that before, but, uh, yeah. Ooh, look at this. Oh, no. Here's camp. Oh, baby. I'm home. Cullite for the night. I think I'm going to go right over here once I inspect some trees. Ah. Well, I showed you that on the way in, the composting toilet. And uh, let me just turn around here. Oh, look up there, huh? Please stay there tonight. Look at all that stuff up there. Yee! It's coming down at some point. Well, not the rocks necessarily, but certainly some of those trees. Gorgeous little spot. I don't know. I've never been into Cullite. Ever. My, this is my fourth trip. Am I ever glad I'm here tonight? Let me just show you here. This is uh, just stunning. Well, I showed you the privy composting toilet down there when I came in. And let me just turn around and uh, look at that, eh? Look up, look way up. Ooh, baby. It's amazing those trees are still hanging on. Well, some aren't, but that's, uh, that's what happens. Here is Cullite Cove, and it's I love it here. This is really, really nice. Certainly nice to have a little bit of sun with a cool breeze. Somebody's taking the time here, Kalite Cove, which is awesome. A little boat on the end. A little boat in a big ocean. Quick shot around camp. Go down here and hang out, you know, and just listen to the surf. Uh, Kalite Creek is coming out that way, and I went and had uh, one of those birthday boy babs. Boy, you always worry, though. I do anyway. I know people that don't care, but really, like the cable car is just up here. <laughs> and I was totally exposed, literally, in every way you could be, uh, while I was having my bath. And by the way, George Costanza was right. Shrinkage is real. I'm sorry, it's a family channel. Bear boxes, there's two, which I find a little surprising, given the small size of the campsite, although maybe it was bigger before this, this kind of washout happened. And the usual drying, airing things out from all the fog I've had over the last couple of days. And I did find my solar panel. I thought I left it in New Brunswick in my haste to head west. And uh, no, there it is doing its job. So, all right, I'm gonna ponder supper. I think we're gonna do the stew concoction I showed you the other night with the uh, mashed potatoes, stuffing, corn, and chicken because I'm, I'm hungry and that's a nice big meal. A couple of long days, I'll take you through that in a little bit. But first, let's enjoy that. Put a look out over my tent. Here at Cullite. A little nippy now, got my puffy on and uh, I've been joined by a nice couple that come in here a little later. Surprised at how busy it is on the trail uh, for the time of year. 
which is really cool. So uh, we're building a fire over here, which is really nice. I'm glad it's uh, kind of side-winded of me. <laughs> but uh, so tomorrow's kind of decision day. I'm not sure exactly what the plan is. Um, and I'll tell you why. My initial plan was only to go about 4K to uh, Camper and just chill. But Camper's busy. The other option I can do tomorrow is do 13K to Thrasher. Now, <laughs> Thrasher's also busy, but I don't. That, none of that bothers me. It's just a matter of the long weekend's coming up. And so all the campsites and hotels and stuff are either booked or expensive. And I don't really have a lot. I've got to figure that out in my head. Um, I've been invited to some friend's house on the weekend, which would be awesome if I could get there. So that's an option. But that means I'd have to get out on Friday and uh, try to find somewhere to stay kind of en route. So lots to ponder. Here's the main thing. It's only 4K to Camper. It's 13K to Thrasher. Typically when I do this, I'll leave Camper and hike out to the ferry, which is 13K. Uh, I find Thrasher to Gordon River the more difficult part of that trek. So tomorrow going 13K to Thrasher, probably not going to be a big deal. And that would set me up for Friday if I wanted to do something. So yeah, I'm going to sleep on it, actually. And uh, leave you with, oops, my friends the seals. <laughs> See you in the morning. morning it's day five <laughs> I literally had to use my fingers day five I'm talking quietly because uh, the couple that joined me last night here are not too far away and they're probably still asleep and I don't want to disturb them so just thought I'd show you what's happening this morning another foggy misty one everything's wet it's been pretty much like that since the uh, the heat went away so yeah one of those things, I guess. Bring you around here. Oh, pardon the string. Let's move that. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to try to get to Thrasher today. Um, and then I can get out a day earlier than I had originally thought. Just see what happens. I mean, it's only 4K to uh, Camper. Once I get to Camper, I'll just think to myself, okay, you've got another 8K to the intersection with Thrasher in that vicinity. Uh, there used to be a campsite up top there along a beautiful little brook, which is an option. Uh, or I can take the kilometer down and then do the kilometer back up tomorrow uh, to stay at Thrasher. It tends to be super busy there, so I'm going to time that too. <laughs> Hello. I'm going to time that too because I don't want to get down there and, and like we've had so many large groups, right? Uh, and it's just not a big spot. So anyway, <sighs> breakfast and then the ladders of Kalite. Baby, baby. This is just the beginning. No matter what you do, if you stay at Kalite or even just pass through, you're going to get this going up on one side or the other. And this is just the beginning, as I said. Okay. Come on, rubber legs. <laughs> Still going. <laughs> She's a beaut, Clark. Do lots of this today. It's a tough section from here to Camper. Camper to Thrasher is tough, but it's not nearly as bad as, in my recollection, as uh, Thrasher to the ferry, which uh, we'll be saving for tomorrow for sure, because uh, I'd never make it from here at my pace and my late start. 3.30 is the last ferry. I think they're kind of stuck there, so always got to plan that. Oh dear, I forgot about these ladders and this bridge. <laughs> oh. Wakey, wakey. Slow picking this morning and slow stew, but uh, when you see these, motor. This one's dry, so I'm not too worried about slipping. Lovely viewpoint just back there. I'm going to flash up a picture from a sunnier day. <laughs> not much to show you there this morning, so I didn't do anything, but uh, there it is. It's a lovely spot if you want to sit and have a break. I've been kind of thinking Camper would be my first big stop of the day, about a third of the way where I want to get to. But like I said, it's been slow picking. So I'll make a little time here and fingers crossed it lasts for a while. Ah, finally. 
I'll be taking a long break down here. About four and a half K, I'm gonna guess, simply because of the spur trail. I started tracking a Cullite campsite. So let's head down to Camper, have a snack and some water, and uh, head toward Thrasher. Descended some ladders, a little bit more to go. There's the Guardian Cabin here at Camper Bay. And uh, boy, I don't see anybody. Wouldn't that be something if nobody was here last night? That would be very interesting. Anyway, I'm gonna go down here and see if I can rock hop. But if not, I'm gonna have to take the cable car and then I'll get to the other side and take a break. I need some food and water up and then carry on. Nice little break there. Some food and tanked up on water. I'm uh, certainly dehydrated. A little easier for us fellows to tell. I'll use some ultralights, of course, when I get to camp, but uh, yeah, gotta keep an eye on that even out here. It's cool, but that doesn't mean you're not sweating. It just means you're not thirsty necessarily. So keep hydrated. Now, <laughs> oh, we're gonna be climbing for a bit. What else is new? Okay, so this bridge is a bit dodgy. Uh, planks move, come up and stuff. I always walk here where the beam is, right? That way, if something were to happen, you're on the beam, which has a lot more strength. And then, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming up to beach access A. So if you're gonna go around Owen Point, this is an option for you. I, uh, I always said that I'd never do that solo, just for safety. Uh, but given everything that's going on in my world, you know, you gotta start living, right? So frankly, I would have had no fear about doing it solo today at all. But the tides are nowhere near my favor. In fact, high tide's hitting right now. Uh, I did meet a gentleman who just got off though and said he just beat the tide. So he was alone as well. So it can be done. Lots of people do it. If I do come out again, I'm going to try to time it so I can do it. Whether I'm solo or, or if I'm with somebody. But uh, yeah, at this point, risks, bring them on. Well, shoot, this trip is going to be one of lost things. I lost my poo kit a couple days ago. Fortunately, I had toilet paper in my toiletry kit. I just have to blow my nose or something at night. Fine, no big loss there really. Just need a new tick key and a trowel. Toilet paper we all have, but I just lost my water bottle with my filter attached to it. I have a Katahdin Bee Free and I did almost fall a couple times. Lord knows where that fell out at. What happens with these, I've got a Hydra Pack that I attach to the Bee Free, because it's stronger than the bottles that come with it. Great. But as they get depleted, they get all floppy. And this one fell out of the little holster I have. So then I usually carry Aquatabs. So I went digging for those. I don't have any Aquatabs for some reason. I can't remember why, maybe they expired. So now I'm gonna have to boil water also means I'm gonna to have to take a longer lunch break when I find a good stream because as I said earlier I'm already dehydrated now if I were hiking with somebody obviously they'd have a filter and we could use that but not solo and I won't be bringing a spare filter but I will be buying some more aqua tabs it's been like this most of the way Oh boy, when I hit the 2K from the turn mark, I'm gonna stop and boil some water. Have my lunch. Come on, marker. Kilometer 70, five to the trailhead, one down to Thrasher. Now, I can't go to Gordon today, it's far too late. The ferry's done in a half an hour, but just down here, I know there used to be a bridge in 2018 with a beautiful little campsite along the river beside it. I think it's the same river source that feeds Thrasher. 2019, the bridge was hit by a big tree. 
Not sure the campsite remains, but I'm going to look real quick. It's only be a couple hundred meters up here. And that would save me a kilometer down and a kilometer up tomorrow morning. I'm pretty spent right now, to be honest. I had my West Coast Trail fall earlier, which is cool. And uh, if I can tuck in here, have a quiet evening by the stream, that would be amazing. So let's see what happens. Yeah, so the bridge used to be over there. It's still not repaired. It takes a while for parks to, uh, you know, do what they need to do. So I'm going to go down here. You can see there is somebody's actually set up a like a tent pad of some sort. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go down here, and uh, I think this is home, guys. I have an earth sack, so I'm not worried about food storage or anything like that. I think this is home. Well, pardon the carnage <laughs> up there. Uh, across the bridge, but uh, man, that's been out since 2019. So I think COVID, obviously everything was closed here for a year, but that's uh, that's interesting. A little bit of a reroute down here, right past my tent. A little uh, shot around what I'll call camp. Uh, actually, you know, I eyed this spot in 2018 and thought, wow, what a cute little place that would be to stay. And I'll tell you, I didn't need to go down to the beach again tonight. Uh, you know, there are some big trees hanging toward me. Well, it's got to happen sometime, right? <laughs> so I'm on to my second meal of the night. I was pretty hungry when I got here and very, as you know, dehydrated. So I've got some old chicken teriyakis that I never take out because I don't like them that much. But I brought one on this trip. And uh, that's what we're having tonight. What do you think? But hang on. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then I didn't shave the day before. Day six of the West Coast Trail beard. What do you think? My mother always teases me about this being white. Thanks, Mom. Anyway, it's a good night. I'm going to get in early and get up early and get out of here. Well, that's a wrap on day five. I got it this time because I thought it in my head. <laughs> so true. Yeah, uh, end of day five, 13 kilometers. The last almost entire third, uh, basically uphill. I just looked at my Gaia GPS track and uh, yeah, wow, and it felt like it too. I mean, the, the ladders of Kalite to start off really got the old, uh, what do I call them, jiggly legs, uh, rubber legs going, rubber legs, jiggly legs. Anyway, I uh, got the old rubber legs going and then, yeah, the last third I was uh, low on water because of the loss filter and uh, kind of dragging my butt in here, so I'm glad I found it. 5k just under 5k now to the trailhead the first section is going to be pretty steep uphill and then generally mostly downhill toward uh gordon river there'll be a couple spikes uh for sure that i looked at tonight on guy and also i kind of remember especially just before you get to the ladder you look at it and go are you kidding me there's like one last uphill just the trail getting you again so anyway pretty happy to be finished uh it's a great trail, but it's my fourth time, and I wasn't out here necessarily to experience uh, things, as I mentioned, you know, in the opening couple of days. I'll touch on that tomorrow, and thank you all for it. Uh, and just a little more deep thoughts with Stu, but uh, that'll be tomorrow, and I'll keep it short this time, I promise. <laughs> you can count on me. Morning, day six on the West Coast Trail. Yes, just like last night, I finally got the day right. Haha, <laughs> I can get the day right because I know I'm getting out today. And uh, 5K to the trailhead, basically, and it's a really tough 5K. I'm up early, not as early as I want it to be because, again, last night I just didn't sleep. This whole trip, I just didn't get enough rest. It's weird. That rarely happens to me on the trail. Um, but it, it is what it is, right? Anyway, yeah, so 5K to the car, then you raise the buoy and uh, wait for the ferry to come across Gordon River and uh, check out. Another thing, always check out with the West Coast Trail at either end, let them know you're finished. That way they don't have to wonder, I wonder if that person's still out there somewhere and needs help. Oh, so that's it. A little coffee, a pro bar breakfast on the trail, and, uh, well, I don't know if you can see it from here, but behind me, just up there, that is straight uphill. And uh, that's how we're going to start the day on day six. Not as bad as starting day five with the ladders of Kalite. But uh, she's going to be a sweat, a sweater. And if I recall, there's a couple of these crouchy, crawly areas. 
I can probably crouch through here, but I think there's one up ahead where I have to actually get on my hands and knees. Oh, this might be tough too. All right, I'll be back. Three ravines I counted last night on the map. <laughs> Just so I know how many down and ups I'm gonna have. I forgot about these ladders here, and I have to say, I don't, oh, oh, geez. I, I don't mind the ladders this morning. A little quicker uphill than picking your way up through roots, rocks, and loose sand. So let's do this. Okay, I'm guessing here, but this might be the highest point on the West Coast Trail. It's uh, not marked, although that could have been a marker. But I'm sh pretty sure I've peeked out here, to be honest. So, wow. She was a steep climb this morning. I know there's a couple more steepies, as I mentioned last night, but excuse me for sniffling. But yeah, whew. Okay. Third one of these in a row with no marker. Uh, I think people take them for souvenirs. It started at this number 69, which I thought was kind of funny, honestly. It's gonna be jiggly here while I walk. Uh, but I think I've got 3K now. That probably says 72, or would have said 72. So 3K to the ferry. Yes, that's the trail. And as I've said in the past, whew, a lot easier to come up it. Hi, Harvey. Thanks for all your hard work out here. Much appreciated. Hello. More ladders, including down there and back up the other side. Oof. Met some new hikers. I think, what, five now? So, you know, I'm less than a K, as you know, from the trailhead. And uh, these folks probably, looking at the clock, would have done their orientation yesterday to get out early and get to camper, which is about six hours. Average pace. They all look fresh and clean. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're thinking, man, that guy looks like he stinks. And he does. So uh, one thing I'm going to ask the campground at the trailhead is if I can pay for a shower. Not staying there tonight, but... Uh, a lot of hostels and stuff you can pay for a shower, so maybe they'll let me have a shower. That would be to everyone's benefit. <laughs> Everyone around me, that is. Hills never show well on video, but this is kind of the kick I'm talking about. A couple of these little kicks from the trail at the very, very end. Oh, man. Well, there it is. Time to raise the buoy. You can see the line here. I'll show it to you in a sec. This is how the boat can see you. Always takes a few minutes. Obviously, they have to be looking. There's the buoy. And, uh, well, the steepest ladder on the trail right there. Oh, my toes just tingled. Let's go down and wrap it up. Well, pardon the sun. I'll take it. And it's a beautiful breeze here as I've raised the buoy. Waiting for the ferry, and I want to thank you for watching and uh, coming with me on this journey. And it was a journey. I use a lot of hiking metaphors in life, like put one foot in front of the other, or uh, it's all uphill from here, or it's all downhill from here, and they are metaphors for life. And I thought of another one that I want to share with you. Uh, you know, when you come out on a trail like this, you have a heavy backpack at the beginning. And as you keep walking, you shed some of that weight uh, through food and fuel, things like that. And it's the same with your head and your mind. A lot of times you come out here with your head heavy and full. And the more time you walk, well, the less full it becomes. And, and the, more, the more human clarity uh, you get. I think we underrate this type of activity in, in the mental health world. I, I don't think so anymore. It's getting better. But, you know, this is my... This is my antidepressant, my fluoxetine, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, of course that has its place as well but this does it for me and i think if you come out here and and uh let your world narrow a little bit and let your mind clear itself you're going to be you're going to be better off for it and uh you know when i if you watch the video from the beginning to now you'll see that my mood <clears throat> definitely has changed i'm processing the biggest losses of my life and 
I could just feel my mood lighten as I kept walking and getting to this point and I feel I feel different today I feel better I hope that lasts for a while but I have a feeling I'm gonna have to keep putting one foot in front of the other and maybe even go back and find that last trail marker to make sure I'm I'm on the right path but I appreciate you joining me and I'd love it if you keep in touch if this touches you in some way if, if my sharing this with you connects with you send me a note um, comment below subscribe to the channel it's gonna be uh, we're gonna do some cool things because I, I need to um, and I would love to share it with you so anyway I'll flash up the West Coast Trail total distance that I walked including my spur trail to Kalite and things like that here it is Wow fourth time and I'm done and uh, I'm not sure I'll do it again in the near future unless I'm out here with friends and we turn it into some event like that so I really appreciate your company on this trip and I appreciate you indulging me in my in my thoughts and feelings and I'll leave you with that the gorgeous Gordon River at Port Renfrew as always thank you for watching I'll see you next time I look to the sea Reflections in the waves spark my memory Some happy, some sad I think of childhood friends and the dreams we had we Live happily forever So the story goes But somehow we missed out on the pot of gold but we'll try best that we can to care